Hello and welcome to Digital Tanka Workshop. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to create uh, the light ray effects that emanate from the body of an enlightened being. Uh, so to give you a little bit of a look at what we're trying to achieve today, we've got uh, this image here that I've already finished. And what we're going to do today is we'll just look at uh, a quick and easy way of creating those effects yourself. Uh, normally uh, the straight lines aren't so difficult to do but these uh, squiggly lines are very difficult to do if you have to draw them from scratch. So I've worked out an easy way of doing those and uh, I'll share that with you now. Okay, so the first thing to work out is the point of radiation uh, where the light rays actually emanate from and this is going to be difficult uh, sorry different in uh, in each tanka uh, the the image that I'm working on is a uh, color chakra and so there the, in that image the deities are standing and the uh, light rays emanate from the approximate place where the um, the wrists of the deity cross holding the vajra and bell so I've already worked that out and if I call up my guides by pressing a command and the uh, colon bracket sorry the colon key then um, that is a shortcut for uh, hiding the guides or showing the guides so here at the central point this is our point of uh, emergence of these rays so I'll hide this work and we'll begin from scratch with that process. So um, the easy way to do this is by using the path tool. And I don't use that tool very often, but uh, when you need it, it's very, very handy. Um, so the path tool we come across here, uh, and it's the top one known as pen tool. And what we need to do is we need to draw our light ray emanating from this point. So this is our first uh, place we need to add a little vector handle. So we just click there and drag a little bit. And then uh, we need to add a second handle. Uh, let's say approximately here. We're trying to uh, have this arc around this central point uh, so it'll come down uh, here like this. These will be erased. Another option would be to have it end, um, end at the intersection of the, the sun and the moon cushion here. Uh, so maybe for the to, to make life easy, we might actually do that because that'll make it a little bit clearer when we're going through the process. Um, so we've got our two points. We only need two points for this. Um, if you're doing a more complex line, uh, you, you'd need more points. But um, for what we're doing here, uh, two points is more than enough. Well, I don't know, more than enough. You need two points. Put it that way. Uh, three points to just make life hard. So, uh, so once we've got it drawn, all we need to do now is manipulate it. And to manipulate it, we come across to the white arrow tool. Uh, there's two here, there's path selection tool and direct selection tool. Uh, I use the white arrow tool, which is the direct selection tool. And with that selected, we can now click on a point and move it around. Okay, so let's add our point to there. And so what we're trying to make is, is just a basic S shape. And so we just drag the handle until it creates that shape for us. Now generally um, the curve will be more pronounced at the root here and then it'll become more the curve will become more open as it radiates from the central point. So let's say that's you know approximately what we'd like there. So now what we need to do is we need to draw a line along that path and that's called stroking the path. So if I right click on that path, a little uh, context sensitive menu will come up 
and down here it will say stroke path. If I click on stroke path it will give me the option to essentially draw a line along that path. The tool we want to draw along uh, is the brush tool. You can use any tool but here we're using the brush. Uh, for the time being we'll leave simulate pressure clicked but we'll talk about that in a second. So if I just select OK there let's see what it does. Okay so that kind of actually worked. What it does is it, is it strokes the line with the last brush that you use. So just coincidentally the last brush that I used is the correct size. But if it's not for example uh, if you want to use a different brush then what you have to do is you go up to the brush tool, uh, press F5 which brings up the dialog box and from there you can um, change the, the shape of your brush. So if I made it for example uh, something like this that's my brush tool so if I draw a line it'll look like that Then, if we go back to our path, we need to have one of the path tools selected to be able to access that stroke path dialog box. So if I right click on the path now, it just gives me the brush, uh, a quick and simple uh, dialog box for the, uh, the brush selection. We need to have uh, one of the pen tools selected, so we'll go back to either of the pen tools that we've used now, right click and then that uh, stroke path option will be available. So now if we click stroke path, then that draws our brush. So this is a very uh, powerful feature uh, and we'll use it to, to greater effect when we draw uh, these lines in a second, these squiggly lines here. So we'll go Control Z, we'll go back to our brush tool, we'll select a 4 pixel brush, which I just know from experience is how thick I want this line, 4 or 5 probably doesn't matter, and then right click, stroke path, and there's our line. If we turn off that path by going to the path, um, palette, uh, clicking outside of it, then there's our line. So now to create our radiate, radiant pattern, uh, we make the path active again, path selection tool. It's now just a matter of copying that shape and continuing to move around the circular pattern, creating that radiating effect. And each time you move you need to adjust the, the handles on your line so that you're getting uh, a new shape each time. And this works very well because uh, what you're finding is you're creating a, there's a randomness to what you're doing. It's not the same thing every time. You could essentially just copy this first line multiple times and spin it around this central point, but then it would look very, uh, very mechanical and uh, from a distance that pattern would really show up as being a computer generated pattern. This at least is giving uh, you a fighting chance to have some, uh, some random nature to, to what you're designing and to allow you to uh, try and combat that uh, overly digital look which will more than likely make your tunkers look bad. Okay, so if you do that enough times uh, you arrive at a pattern that looks like this. And then uh, if we fill that 
in the inside with our squiggly line and we have a quite a, quite a nice radiance there. So let's now, we've talked about how we make this line. Let's now look at how we make this more complex line. So if we zoom in, we can see that this is made up. If I take my brush tool, this this is a, actually a brush which is only this big and it's stamped over and over again to create a continuous line. So before we can do anything we need to create that brush. So to create a brush we can go to File, New and we create a new document and let's make it uh, I'm guessing here about 30 pixels by, we might make it more than that, 40 pixels by 40 pixels. Here's our new document, so it's a tiny little document. And onto that, we draw our line. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to draw a line that makes up of half of a repeating pattern. So we're trying to uh, draw something that looks like this. But the only part we need to draw is that part. And then it becomes like the links of a chain. If we add all of those together, then we'll have a line uh, that, can, that continues almost seamlessly. So I'll just do that accurately. Uh, we want our brush to be reasonably light here, so I'm going to come down to a 3 pixel brush and I'm going to go like that. And I'm just going to extend that a little bit just so I have a little bit of white there. I'm going to drag down a line because we need this to be uh, we don't want to have too much overlap here because that will shine up as a little dark point so using the eraser I'm just going to cut that back to the halfway point then from there the next step is we need to define this as an actual brush. So we can go to Edit, all the way down to the bottom here, uh, Define Brush Preset. So we click that, and that converts this document into a brush. And you can see the little brush will come up here, 39 pixels, which is about right. Uh, we get a chance to name it, so we can call that uh, Squiggle. And there it is, and it immediately uh, picks up our brush tool like that. So if we come across to our document that we're working on, if we pop up a new layer, then we have the brush now that we can draw with. And that's an eraser, which we don't want. So because the eraser was the last tool I had in this document, it's picked up the, the brush head into the eraser tool and not the brush tool. So uh, to get the brush to work, I'll have to come across here and then select it from the most recently uh, used brushes, which will be right down the bottom. So there it is. And that's me drawing with it. And it doesn't work the way we thought it would. OK, so to fix that, uh, we go Command-Z and we come across to... Uh, the brush dialog box or we can just press F5 which is what I like to do and I'll bring this into the center of the screen so it's nice and large 
And now all it's just a matter of doing is uh, adjusting the, the qualities of that brush till it does what we want. And this is where the, uh, the magic happens. So first thing to do is we'll get our spacing sorted. And the spacing needs to be just right so that it starts to form a chain. And that's about right there. We'll, we'll refine that in a second. Okay, so we've got our spacing about right, but now the problem we're having is that throughout the drawing of the line, uh, some of the some of the chain links join up and others don't. So uh, we'll come up here into shape dynamics, and the magic setting here is in angle jitter in the control section. Come down to direction, and that will draw each of those little brush stamped points. Uh, tangential to the line. So it, it picks up on the direction of the line and it adds those tangentially. Okay, now the second quali quality that we want in this line is that we need it to taper from uh, thin to full thickness back to thin again using brush pressure. So if I step outside of this box and I draw this now, then you can see we have our line, but it doesn't taper, there's no pressure sensitivity to it. So, coming back here into Shape Dynamics, we need control, uh, pen pressure. And then I now have control over the thickness of that brush depending on the pressure I'm applying all the way down to very fine. So that's uh, now exactly what we want. So we'll just undo all of those. Uh, we'll close that dialog box. And now we're ready to draw a line. So we've got our brush sorted. and we'll go back to our document and now it's exactly the same process. So we pick up our, our pen tool or our path tool and we make ourselves a line. And again right click, stroke path now here we need to make sure simulate pressure is now important because we actually have a pressure sensitivity setting for our brush. And even though you're not actually touching the, the tablet with your brush, uh, what it assumes is that maximum pressure is applied uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, sorry, maximum pressure is applied in the middle and the minimum pressure is at the, the two end points. So if we click that, let's see what happens. And if we turn off our path and zoom in, there's our perfect line. And that's worked out really well. If I zoom right in, you can see uh, we could maybe refine the spacing a little bit. It's not quite linking up, but uh, from the distance that you actually view this at, that's not going to be visible. Now, the only thing you might want to change here, and in fact, if this was uh, going to be my final uh, attempt at doing this in the painting, I wouldn't want it to taper to this thinner point. Uh, so what I'd do is I'd, I'd bring up uh, the dialog box again, F5, and we need to have a brush, t brush tool selected for this to work. And then here, uh, where we've got pen pressure, we need to establish a minimum diameter. And that just means that it, it doesn't taper to zero. So we can experiment with, say, 25. And we can make that stroke again. And there we have it. So there you can see we've got our nice uh, line. And here it's tapering to that 25% uh, minimum diameter that we spoke about. And then, uh, same as the straight lines, you just need to make those in an array 
which indicates that this is a, a, you know, a, a point that's radiating light. And when you've done all of that, then uh, then you'll get something like this. And I think maybe, you know, if you want to talk about time, I think that might take maybe half an hour to do uh, maybe 15 minutes for each layer. It doesn't take long at all. And then, of course, uh, what you can do is you can uh, duplicate those layers and transform them and you can get some double layer, double rayed effects like that very simply. and it doesn't look overly mechanical. Uh, what I've done here in the middle, you can see I've got some masks set up. So if I undo those masks, you can see that they, that it, that it comes down to a central point. Uh, but I wanted it to, to gradually fade in, in terms of transparency as well as size. So what I've got is completely transparent in the middle then, uh, both uh, growing in size, and transparency and then radiating from that central point. Okay, so that's it. I hope that's uh, been beneficial to you and you can use that in your own tucker painting. That's uh, saved a lot of time in terms of, uh, if you had to draw that with a brush, that would be, uh, you know, uh, a, I'd say easily a full day's work uh, in that and, um, and very, very hard to get those lines correct. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video.